you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Behind the switchboard in the outer office of the Bureau, Miss Brooks is usually able to prevent visitors from getting past her into the Chief's office. But there's one exception. Pagan Zellschmidt. But what's the difference, Mr. Chief? I knew you'd be happy to see me, of course, so why should I wait to have myself announced? Well, Schmidt, get out. Where's Mr. Thurston? Australia. You can get a plane out in 30 minutes. If I didn't know you so well, I wouldn't know you were trying to get rid of me. But this is important. So just tell me where he is and I'm... Oh, Chief. Ken. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, hello, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, I just found out that... Look, Chief. Have you seen this morning's paper? Oh, I know, Ken. I was... uh... But, Mr. Thurston, do you know that... Later, Pagan. Here, Chief. Take a look. Hmm? Down at the bottom of the page. Oh. Oh, Rangoon, Burma. Though few details are yet available, apparently a condition of serious unrest prevails in the Principality of Tavoy, 500 miles south of here, following the shooting yesterday of a man named Paul Zarley. Zarley died a few minutes after... Paul Zarley? Ken, that's not the... That's right, Chief. The leader of that group of displaced persons who left Poland to find new homes around Rangoon. Mr. Thurston, just let me but tell that you... must I... have been six months ago, Ken. About that. They landed near the south end of the peninsula and started overland through the jungle. But they never reached Burma. Well, uh, what happened to him? We know what happened to one of them. He's dead. In Tavoy. Well, somebody... Please. I knew Paul Zali, Chief. And I know what that chance of a new life in Burma meant to him and to the rest of those homeless people who went with him. We can't sit back and leave them in trouble over there. I'm going over. Have a look at it. Mr. Thurston, I've been trying to tell you. I got an old friend in Tavoy. Oh. Who is it, Pagan? Prince Khan, the guy who runs the joint. The prince, eh? You know him pretty well? Oh, sure. I lived there in the palace for six months. All right, then. How about coming along with me? The um, usual expenses, of course. Must be something wrong with the acoustics in here. Can't hear a thing. Plus a couple of hundred bucks. A couple of hundred? No, I can hear you as plain as anything. Mr. Thurston, when do we leave? <laughs> to land at the coast 40 miles from Tavoy. And the road's no good. They let everything run down during the war. Even tore up the railroad to Rangoon. Uh, Sounds as though Tavoy was pretty well isolated. Oh, it's clear off the map. Nothing new in a thousand years. Well, there's at least one new thing. A gun. You know, I think some bandit probably bumped off Paul Zarley. The jungle is full of him, Mr. X. Then what's the matter with the prince? Can't he clean him out? Too lazy and don't like to be bothered. Got the right idea of how to live, Mr. Thurston. Just loafs around all day, listens to music, and drinks champagne. While a stranger in his country, a man tried to take care of a group of homeless refugees, gets shot to death in the city streets. Oh, the prince probably doesn't even know about it yet. Trouble gets him all upset, uh, so the only thing he... Hey, that's right. He's a sucker for stud poker. Maybe I can take this 200 bucks and run it up into... Hey, 
How did you meet this prince, anyway? Oh, I was loafing around Mandalay and heard he was looking for a jingoist. Huh? So I came down to Tavoy and spent six months learning him how to talk good English. Palace Gate, right there at the corner of the square, Mr. Thurston. I told you this place was a regular paradise. Looks more like a powder keg. I can't understand it. These people didn't used to be so unfriendly. I'll have to ask my old friend, the prince, what's wrong. I hope he's your old friend. We may need him. Huh. Well, if ever I saw a town that was smoldering under the surface, this one is. What happened? Somebody threw a rock. Broke a shop window over there. They're starting a riot. How's I? Holy smoke, what's happened to this town? It's flaring up pretty fast. This is the kind of thing that... There go the palace guards, Mr. Thurston. They ought to be able to stop it. Mm. Fired over their heads. Looks like they're breaking it up, all right. Good thing they were right here. If it once got out of hand, it's hard to tell what might have... What's wrong with you? Why did you not help? Huh? Why should you stand here with... Oh, you're not one of us. Who do you mean by us? I made a mistake. I beg your pardon. No, 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 you wait. My name's Ken Thurston. I'm Helen Zali. Zali, that... That was Paul Zali. He was my father. I'm sorry, Helen. About what happened to him. My father was shot in the back, Mr. Thurston. Here in this very square. He died not more than 20 feet from where we stand. You know who killed him? I know who had him killed. Neruda. Neruda? A Burmese native, sir. Leader of the sugar farmers here in Tavoy. Oh, Mr. Strong. Hope I'm not intruding, Helen. Oh, no, Mr. Strong. This is Mr. Thurston. How do you do? How do you do? Uh... Are you one of this homeless group, Mr. Strong? No, I've made my home here in Tavoy for the last two years. I came here from Cuba. Mr. Strong has been the one friend we've had here. Had it not been for him, we should have starved. And unfortunately, one friend for a hundred helpless people just isn't enough. I... I could certainly use an ally, Mr. Thurston. That means helping a group of people who never should have been kicked around in the first place. Then I am an ally. Perhaps you're making a mistake, Mr. Thurston. We're the most thoroughly hated people in Tavori. Why did you stop here, Helen? I understood you were going to settle on new farmlands around Rangoon. We were. Till Neruda's men attacked us in the jungle as we passed through here. And robbed us of everything we owned. We're penniless now. So even though we starve here... We're unable to travel on. Maybe I ought to have a talk with this Neruda. He seems to be the... Mr. Thurston, look. Here comes my buddy, the prince. Evidently he heard the disturbance out here in the square. Uh, greetings and felicitations, old pal. How you been anyway? I, uh, I, uh, uh, you do remember me, don't you? Quite well, Mr. Zellschmidt. I have thought of you often during the last eight years. <laughs> well, that's better. You see, Mr. Thurston? Particularly in connection with a very interesting deck of cards I found in your quarters after you left. The deck had uh, six aces. Well, of all the low-down tricks, hmm, somebody must have been cheating us. Yes, probably so. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Darley. Your Mr. Highness. Strong. Your Highness. Mr. Thurston... I'd like you to meet my dear pal, uh, Prince Khan. Your Highness. I yes. hope you will not judge us by the incident which just occurred here in the street, Mr. Thurston. I dislike trouble of any kind. Then you should do something about Rudin and his people. They started the fight without the least provocation on our part. Ah, Miss Zali, is it not always the very beautiful who caused the most trouble? Well, whenever trouble is involved, the name Neruda seems to turn up about as often as anybody's. Uh, yes, Mr. Thurston. I overheard you express an intention of visiting the man. I must advise you not to. In fact, I shall assign a guard to make sure you refrain from it. Any particular reason, Your Highness? Uh, yes. Such an action is only likely to create a disturbance and cause more trouble. I must go look into this matter. May I suggest you seek a formal audience tomorrow? But how about the game of... Uh, how about the... Well, anyway, he... He's gone. Yeah, your old pal. Oh, just give me some time to work on him. 
Uh, I've got to be going now, too, Mr. Thurston. Uh, dine with me this evening, if you're free. Fine, Mr. Strong. I'd love to. Uh, it's the house on top of the hill. Make it about eight, if you can. Yes. I suppose that includes me, too. Well, Helen, that was quite a story you gave the prince. I mean, about the way the fight started. I do not understand you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, come now. I stood right here and watched you pick up a rock from the street and then deliberately throw it through that shop window. Don't you think that's pretty strong provocation? see, Mr. Thurston, the lines between the two factions are pretty clearly drawn. On one side, around a hundred of these homeless people from Europe, led by Helen Zali, now that her father's dead. And against them, several hundred Burmese tenant farmers with their unofficial leader, Naruda. Just what is the basis of their hatred for each other, Mr. Strong? Well, I'd say it is lack of understanding, suspicion more than anything else. Difference of race, languages, different ways of life. It's the hardest thing in the world to fight. Well, the Burmese have the idea these people may try to move in and take their tiny farms that they rent. <laughs> Things have been getting worse for weeks, but Zali's murder really touched it off. Neruda, you think? Oh, I don't know. Of course, Helen blames him for it, as well as for the bandit attack some months ago when they first reached here. The bandits couldn't have been some of Prince Khan's guards by any chance. Oh, it's possible, I suppose, but I can't see any reason why. It only means trouble for him and... That's the last thing in the world that Khan wants. Sometimes it's hard to tell what a person wants. Uh, when you look out of these windows, down into the heart of the city, you'd never believe what was boiling there. Hawaii could be the most beautiful place on earth. Yes. How have these people been able to live since they were robbed by the bandits? In charity. Helen has managed to get a little help from Prince Khan. And the rest from you? Well, yes, but what can one man do for a hundred people? Yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, a good deal tougher on them, poor devils. They're at the breaking point, and will be until they find some permanent solution. From what I've seen of Tavoy, they'd better get it no later than tomorrow. It'll take just one more incident to blow the lid off. That's when he sent word for Neruda to come here. Still don't know how you did it. It wasn't easy. It took me till three o'clock this morning. Wonder where the palace guard is today. Nobody around the gate. Oh, probably eating lunch. Hey, get a load of this garden, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, it's beautiful, all right. That's the main entrance over there, past the fountain. The Khan says the palace was built over... Gee, what's all this racket out there in the square? I don't know. Sounds as though something happened. Helen, what's wrong? Out there, somebody was just shot. Shot? Yes, a little girl. There in the square outside the gate. Oh, come on, Pega. That's funny. I didn't hear any shot, Mr. Thurston. No, I. Boy, that crowd sure got out there in a hurry. Yes. Oh, there she is. Lying on the ground. Gee, Mr. Thurston. She's such a little girl. I know. No more than five or six years old. Is she? I mean... Yes, Helen. She's dead. It should not be necessary to ask such a question, Miss Ali. Oh, Neruda. I... My congratulations. Your assassin was an excellent shot. So you're Neruda. And the little girl. One of your people? Yes. And there will be a hundred bodies in the street by noon tomorrow. But they will not be my people. Neruda, listen to me. I know how you feel. Do you? And you, too, must have once come to a conference to speak of peace. Only to find that the one who is lying murdered in the dust is your own sister.
just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. There's an easy way to tell how good a refrigerator is, and that's to see what kind of a job it does in the summertime. Take a Frigidaire refrigerator, for example. With its extra storage space, you have plenty of room in the summertime for chilled salads, desserts, melons, and other treats. Plenty of room all the year round for all the foods you want to keep refrigerated. There's lots of room for frozen foods that make meals so easy in the summer and in any season of the year. Big hydrators keep fruits and vegetables fresh as can be for days. Frigidaire quick cube trays give you ice cubes without a struggle, so cool drinks are really enjoyable. And providing all the cold required to keep food good to eat, to freeze foods and keep them frozen, to keep you supplied with ice cubes, is the famous Frigidaire Meter Miser. You know the Meter Miser will do its work faithfully because it's the simplest refrigerating mechanism ever built. Has proved itself in over five million installations. Uses only a trickle of current. Remember how a Frigidaire refrigerator passes the all-important hot weather test. And remember, for all the advantages you want all the year round, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. In a tiny principality on the Burma Peninsula, a bloody riot seems ready to break at any moment. On one side is a group of displaced persons led by Helen Zarley, and against them, several hundred Burmese sugar farmers led by a man named Neruda, whose sister was killed in the street a half hour ago. Now Ken is sitting in a palace, talking to Prince Khan, the ruler of Tavoy. I have placed a line of guards between the native section of the city and the encampment of the others. But the number of guards I have, Mr. Thurston, are far too few. Has there been any attempt to break through the guard line yet, Prince Khan? Apparently not. And I doubt there will be before evening. However, both sides have a few guns and many knives. Once darkness falls, nothing can prevent a riot. Then we've got to prevent it before dark. Why didn't you wire Rangoon for help? I I did not wish to cause any trouble. Well, you've got trouble out there now, whether you want it or not. Plenty of it. And more coming. The guard will resist as long as possible. That won't be long enough. There, there is nothing else to do. Then in that case, I'll take over. You have some plan? I will have. Will you be here if I want you? Yes, Mr. Thurston. I have sent for Miss Darley. I hope I can persuade her to listen to reason. I think you'll have some trouble persuading her, but maybe you know that already. All right. I'll see you later. One cannot be sure. There is much danger, but let us hope so. Well, Mr. Thurston, how'd you come out? Well, hello, Pago. Mr. Strong. That city outside there is like a sleeping volcano, Mr. Thurston. I don't see what can be done now. No, I at the moment. Mr. Strong... How well do you know the prince? So, so, why do you ask? Well enough to force your company on him for about an hour, stick with him and keep him from shaking you off? I think so. If it's important, I'll manage it. One way or another. It's important, all right. Uh, Then here goes. I may as well start right now. What are we going to do, Mr. Thurston? I've got a job for you, Pagan. Here's a list of the landowners these Burmese farmers rent from. I want you to look them up, ask each of them a couple of questions. Meet me there at the palace gate in an hour and we'll... Start the next move. Sure, sure. Anything you say. Well, this is a new reaction. Are you kidding, Mr. Thurston? I'm too scared even to bargain. What do you want me to ask these guys? If I had known this was what you were planning, I'd have never come back to the palace. I'd be halfway to the coast by now. Oh, relax, Pagan. Nobody's bothered us yet. No, no, but the way they look, they may any minute. This is a fine time to come prowling down here in the native section. Had to be done. Oh, that must be Neruda's headquarters there. What did you find off the landowners? Oh, it's about like you figured, Mr. Thurston. 
Farming is practically the only business here. The prince gets most of his taxes of the farm. And why don't we go back to the palace, hmm? I've got to talk to Neruda first. Come on. I don't think these guys at the door are going to let us pass. Well, we'll stop. Mr. Rex, what are they cocking their rifles for? Take it easy, Pedro. Not sure. Very well. Come in, Mr. Thurston. <sighs> Really quite a surprise. Even the palace guards have not dared to come into this section since noon. Maybe they didn't have any reason, Neruda. I did. If it is talk you wish, the time for it is past. Why don't you wake up? Don't you know what will happen afterwards? Martial law. That'll make life pleasant for everybody, won't it? It is too late for talk. Well, you're right about that. It is too late. So let's Go? Go. I do not understand you, Mr. Thurston. I came here to take you back to the palace, Neruda. Let's get started. Mr. Thurston. You plan to take me to the palace through streets filled with my own men? You are a brave man, Mr. Thurston. Let's trade compliments later. Don't have much time right now. You arouse my curiosity. I am inclined to go along with you in order to discover what you have in mind. <laughs> I never thought we'd make it. Oh, good. Everyone's apparently gathered there at the palace gate. Come on. You display an amazing confidence, Mr. Thurston. You know, of course, what would have happened had I raised my hand at any time. I know, Neruda, but I was pretty sure you wouldn't. Mr. Thurston, if I had known where you were going, I'd been a lot more worried than I have been for the first hour. There wasn't any real danger, Mr. Strong. Oh, Helen, glad you're here. Thought I might have to send for you. Prince Khan here did send for me, though I've no idea why. And I did not expect to meet a killer here. Are you claiming that I killed my own sister? It would not surprise me, Neruda. You would do anything to make it appear That's that... That's enough. A... This kind of thing leads no place. It's not over a half hour until dark. You've got a lot to do. Not much time to do it. How much longer must I follow your advice without seeing some result, Mr. Thurston? Not too much longer, Prince Khan. Right now, I want you to detail five men from your palace guard to work under instructions from Pega. Well, a bodyguard? I feel safer already. Neruda, Helen, I want both of you to send word to your people not to make any move until they hear from you personally. I'm not sure my men will obey, Mr. Thurston, but I shall do as you say. I can promise you that my people will do exactly what I tell them to. If you think for one Never moment... Never mind, just do it. Mr. Strong, is it all right if we meet at your house? It's the only... Neutral territory I know of. Yes, of course. Neutral territory? But why not my palace here, Mr. Thurston? No, Prince Khan. Not the palace. All right, get moving. Oh, this is most strange. Now, Pega, here's what I want you to do. Planning, Mr. Thurston. Nothing, Helen. Until Pagon gets here. Now let's have a window open. I never knew this city to be this quiet. Let's hope it stays this quiet for one more hour. Helen, why did you break that window and start a street fight yesterday? It was a bakery shop, Mr. Thurston. Have you ever been starving and looked through a window at loaves of bread? I know the feeling, all right. And it's the same feeling that's behind this whole thing. Your people without enough food and without hope of getting any more. Neruda's people afraid you might try to take theirs. Hunger and fear. The powder keg combination. And in a country ruled by a man who dislikes trouble. Okay, Mr. Thurston. It's all fixed up. I got everything taken care of. Good work, Pagan. Set the box on the table. Okay. He wants 30 seconds to get clear after he puts it up. My curiosity is increasing, Mr. Thurston. Why, Neruda? It's the same old story. The love of power, ambition to be a dictator. 
And hungry, desperate people ready to be used for that ambition. But why was my father killed and their rude assistant? To bring about the very thing that's ready to break out down there in those quiet streets tonight. Riot. Bloodshed. And then martial law. You seem to forget one thing, Mr. Thurston. I inherited the throne of Tavoy from my father. I am already a dictator. Are you really, Prince Khan? There's a signal, Mr. Thurston. The temple bell. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the light. Yeah, I see it, Pagan. What is it, a flashlight? Sure. And it's on the top of a pile about six feet high. Good. Here. Take my gun and keep everybody covered while I let this box over. What? It's a rifle. It's the best gun in the arsenal. Got a telescopic sight, a night glass. The works. Except for a silencer. But we can get along without that. I put a full clip in, just in case you understand. Ah, thanks, Pega. Well, I suppose we have a try at it. I do not understand what you're... It's a hit. Set it on fire with the first shot. Look, a flame. What's burning down there, Mr. Thurston? A pile of timber soaked with kerosene that Pagon set up. That was an incendiary bullet I used. But what is the meaning that of it? That flame is burning in the square on the exact spot where Helen's father was killed. And the rudest sister died 15 feet away. Then in that case... That's right, Helen. The killer fired the shots from this window. No, don't bother trying to open that cabinet, Mr. Strong. I took your rifle out this afternoon while you were watching the prince. Do you mean that Mr. Strong is the one who... Who else could it have been? He's the only one who had a reason. But he was the only one who wanted to help us. Sure, he wanted to help everybody, including the landowners. According to them, Strong has been very generous. Made loans to all of them. And he's ended up controlling their properties. But I still do not understand his reason, Mr. Thurston. Just what I said before, Prince Khan. If a riot had started, you would have been declared... You would have had to declare martial law. But Tavoy is a one-industry country. Your taxes come from the farms. So, the man who controls the land controls you. Now, it's about time you woke up. Boy, what a racket. Never does. Thank heaven neither of us was guilty. I am sure we can work out a decent life now, Miss Sally. That's right. It's too late to help your father, Helen, or your sister, Neruda. But it's not too late to teach your people once and for all that very often when a man says he wants to help you, all he really wants to do is help himself. Your people down there are still blaming each other. So go on out and tell them the truth. Presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. I'm glad to hear that Frigidaire makes home freezers, Mr. Niles. We've been wondering what kind to buy. Yes, you know you can depend on Frigidaire's years of experience and on the meter miser that makes the cold in a Frigidaire home freezer. And now, Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, a story called Contraband, in which the goodwill of two nations is threatened by one person's greed. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Michael Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Service.